Hey everybody, you had to know this was coming if you've been listening to what I've been saying and trying to explain all along. You surely have heard, if not, I'll fill you in. Uh, we've had some action between Hamas and Israel and pretty much Tel Aviv has been the line drawn in the sand and they have crossed it. So let's read through, <clears throat> we'll go through everything and talk. Now, the Israeli aircraft have pummeled the rocket arsenals of the Gaza militants on Friday, and they have signaled a ground invasion might be growing near as troops, tanks, and armored personnel carriers mass near the southern border with the Palestinian territory. You can see the picture of the rocket launched by the Palestinians. Fighting between two sides escalated sharply on Thursday with the first ever attack on Tel Aviv area. Menacing Israel's heartland. No casualties were reported then. But three people died in the country's rocket scarred south when a projectile slammed into an apartment building. The death toll in the densely populated Palestinian territory climbed to 19, including five children as waves of Israeli fighter planes and drones sent missiles hurtling down on suspected weapons stores and rocket launching sites. Fighting has already worsened, widened the insta instability gripping a region in the throes of war and regime upheavals. The Arab Springs, I've been telling you all along, bad guys were getting taken out and really really bad guys were getting put in that were even worse. Most immediately is straining already frayed relations with Egypt which plans to send its Prime Minister to Gaza later Friday in a show of solidarity with its militant Hamas rulers. Now you can see right there Egypt will support Hamas. Israel and Hamas have largely observed an informal truce since uh, Israel's devastating incursion into Gaza four years ago, but rocket fire and Israeli airstrikes on militant operations didn't halt entirely. The latest flare-up exploded into major violence Wednesday, when Israel assassinated Hamas' military chief, following up with a punishing air assault meant to cripple the militant's ability to terrorize Israel with rockets. See, Israel wants to live in peace, but Palestinians and such won't let them. The land has always belonged to Israel. If you don't believe that, you're on the wrong side of the fence and you better jump over to the other side, because when God comes back, he will judge you for being on the wrong side. He gave that land to Israel and their people. He only scattered them in the wilderness and punished them, but the land still belonged to them. So while they were scattered, other people did what? Occupied it. And then he prophesied they would someday return back to their land. And they did. They're willing to live in peace alongside the Palestinians right next to them, house next door kind of stuff. But they don't want that. They want all that land for themselves and they're hell-bent on running them out, killing them, warring with them, and bloodshed and everything else. That's it in a nutshell. <clears throat> the Israeli military reported early Friday that its aircraft had struck more than 350 targets since the beginning of its operation against Hamas rocket operations. Thursday, Israeli warplanes struck dozens of Hamas-linked targets, sending loud booms echoing across the narrow Mediterranean coastal strip at regular intervals, followed by gray columns of smoke. At nightfall, several explosions shook Gaza City, several minutes apart, a sign the strikes were not letting up. The military said the targets were about 70 underground rock lo rocket launching sites. The onslaught has not deterred the militants from striking back with more than 400 rockets aimed at southern Israel. For the first time, they also unleashed the most powerful weapons in their arsenal. Iranian-made 
Farge 5 rockets capable of reaching Tel Aviv. So you can see Iran. Maybe their fighters are not there, but their hardware is there. Ahmadinejad can say whatever he wants to. He's a liar. They do not want peace. They want the destruction of Israel and their people dead. The two rockets that struck close to Tel Aviv appear to have landed in the Mediterranean Sea, defense officials said, and another hit an open area on Tel Aviv's southern outskirts. No injuries were reported, but the rocket fire, the first in the area from Gaza, sowed panic in Tel Aviv and made the prospect of a ground incursion more likely. Read into this. The government later approved the mobilization of up to 30,000 reservists for a possible invasion. Prime Minister Netanyahu said the army was hitting Hamas hard with what he called surgical strikes and warned of a significant widening of the Gaza operation. Israel will continue to take whatever action is necessary to defend our people, and I applaud that. At least 12 trucks were seen transporting tanks and armored personnel carriers toward Gaza late Thursday, and buses carrying soldiers headed toward the border area. Israeli TV stations said a Gaza operation was expected on Friday, though military officials said no decision had been made. We will continue the attacks, and we will increase the attacks, and I believe we will obtain our objectives, said Benny Gantz, Lieutenant General who is the military chief. So, is it coincidence or not that the enemies of Israel mounted this uh, attack? Remember, they said it was the first ever of its kind. Go back and find your paragraph here. rocket fire, the first in the area from Gaza. Is it coincidence that after Obama was elected this began? They won't let him alone. They fire rockets at him. They provoke him. And then Israel responds. And then you get the media. And then the media sides up with the attackers, with Hamas. People are people, but they'll show innocent people being killed, and, and innocent people being killed is terrible and tragic. But just because you don't have a gun in your hand doesn't mean you don't have hate in your heart. Now a little baby, yeah, that's different because they're a little baby. But uh, teenagers and stuff, they're old enough to know the difference between love and hate. And so even though they may not have guns and be shooting, they still want Israel to suffer. I'm sorry to say that, it's just a fact. You know, reality is what it is, and you can't change it. You can't sugarcoat the truth and turn it into a fantasy that you would like to believe, because that's not real. <clears throat> so it is uh, a telltale sign whenever it mentioned that the Egyptians are going to endorse Hamas and stand behind them. Hamas is a bunch of scumbag terrorist organization. You know, it's just the way it is. And so, the Muslim Brotherhood is tied in with Egypt. They're running it, like I said they would be if they took over and got in on the elections, which was surely fixed so that they could get in there. That is why there is overthrow. It hasn't gotten any better anywhere they did regime change. They only did regime change so that they could make war with Israel. 
Are you understanding what I'm saying? All the pieces on the chessboard have to be in place before you make a major move, and they're getting real close to having all their pieces on the chessboard. Apparently some are getting a little antsy and they're ready to get it on right now. But I can promise you, and God will promise you, and He has, no one, not the United States, not China, not Russia, not a combined effort of the entire world's arsenals will ever, ever destroy Israel and their people ever again. No one will ever take them again. That's just a fact. It's just the way it is. And it's the way it's supposed to be. He's protecting them. Many people blame them for this, blame them for that. You know, you got a misinterpreted view of Zionism. Uh, bad, you want to say bad things about Netanyahu. Like I said, God won't like it if you're on the wrong side of the fence. Because there's no second chance once the judgment comes. You can't stand in front of him and say, well, it's what I thought. It's what it looked like. I understand now. Okay, I'm sorry. It's too late then. You got to either get on the bandwagon or take what you take what you're going to get. Because there will be repercussions for not being on the right side. I'm telling you. For your own good, Muslims, any other whatever you are besides uh, a believer in Judaism and Christianity, you're going to lose, and that's just the way it is. So if you're willing to lose and go to the bad place forever, and it ain't going to be pleasant for you, there ain't going to be any virgins there. There ain't going to be nothing that's a torment for you. And pain and suffering and anguish. Well, now's your chance. Now's the time. Get with the program. Face the reality and the truth. This is the beginning of more to come. We're going to see how actually how much worse this gets. But Israel can kick them guys butt easy. It should not be no problem for them. So what you're probably going to see is you're going to see the lame stream line media making this out like Israel's a big bully. That's probably what they're going to do. And so all you have to do to get the truth is flip it over and understand they're protecting themselves. They're surrounded by other countries that want to kill them all. And that will group together and endorse each other, even though they may, you know, not really like each other that much. They'll band together as Arab brothers in order to, for the common good to go against Israel. That's just the way it is. So find out as much as you can. I've been surfing everywhere and reading everything I can to find all the updates and stuff. But this is this has got you started, and you can take it from here yourself. You need to get interested in this if you're not, because this is a sign. Okay, it really is. I told you to pay attention to Israel. Well, I'm putting it right out in front of you. This is a big time sign. So I love everybody out there. I wish you all the best. I hope God blesses you and protects you. If you don't know him, search him out and come to him. He's always there for you. Put on the armor of God. Shield yourself from the evil. And keep looking up in the heavens. Because that's where you're going to see things you need to. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.